I'm Nisha Zachary and I am here with my good friend Lisa Curtis and we are sitting down to have conversations um, where we attempt to make sense of what's going on in the world but we know that there's a lot of this that's not going to make any sense. Um, we sat down a while ago and just decided we were going to have conversations because obviously I'm black, she's white, and we have different perspectives. We have different experiences in life that we come, came from and different experiences life that we are going through at this time. So we want to have those conversations live with you all or semi-live with you all. <laughs> and we want to invite you to take a seat at the table and join in the conversation with us. We would love to hear your feedback, any questions that you have, any input you wanna give. We want to have a dialogue with the world about what is going on in the world? Lisa? That was really well said. I mean, I don't know what else to add to that. That was beautiful, especially for off the cuff. But I am really thrilled, Nisha, that we're sitting down, we're having this conversation, um, you know, because we, you and I have been talking about this stuff for years now. And yeah. we bring such interesting points of view and experiences that, you know, you know, I, I've told you several times, you've just blown my mind away, things I had never thought of. Right. Um, and that I just find to be incredibly helpful to, to begin to put into my, my repertoire of just experience. And so I begin to maybe, I can't possibly make sense of some of this crap that's going on, but I can begin, I think, I hope we can begin as a collective to talk through some of it so that it's not so damaging to our mental health, which is one of the things that you know is a cornerstone of what I do. I just, we have so many things that happen in this world that are so traumatic and so awful that we keep raising humans, young people that turn into people who are gonna support us on social security, oh God. who are traumatized. <laughs> and that's gotta just stop, it's gotta stop. Yeah, it does. And I think that's um, one of the things that I love about the way we have conversations because I am a mother of three. You are a mother of a cat. And, you know, again, like whether you have have children or don't have children, just like you just said, they're all going to eventually be deciding our fate. <laughs> so it's like how we raise them is how they're going to treat us when that time comes. And if they're totally confused, then we're all screwed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, and, you know, I think not only are, are we screwed from the point of view of like what's going to happen to us individually, but again, as that collective, you know, right. the more people that are walking around with questions or fears or concerns, the more we're just going to perpetuate some of this stuff. Right. And that, that's just not acceptable. You know, I was thinking yesterday about that article, you and I, so we should maybe preface this part. One of the pieces that we wanted to do, you and I had talked about, right. is putting out some articles beforehand, because one of the things that we've been doing for a couple of years now is, hey, did you see, did you read, and sharing articles back and forth, mm -hmm. or podcasts, or whatever we happen to run across. Um, and we would love for you guys who are listening or watching to follow along with us. And we'll try to get those articles listed before we release this conversation. Um, but I was thinking specifically about that article that we read about the, um, the young woman down in, I don't remember exactly where, but she, her valedictorian status was challenged. Yes, I think that's down in, I know it's in the South somewhere. <laughs> I can't remember either. And how, how, it ended up being that they named two salutatorians and two valedictorians and gee whiz, one of them was black and one of them was white. And, right. Um, how the school district didn't even have the courtesy to talk to the original valedictorian and her family before mm -hmm. they named a co-valedictorian the day of graduation. Um, right. You know, just what, are, what message are we sending these young people? What are we sending? What message are we sending her? Exactly. And I think the part that just blew my mind out of it. So I just looked it up, it's Mississippi. And one of the things that I just could not wrap my head around is like, we just went through 2020 with all the things that have happened in the last year. Like it's literally been a year um, from George Floyd to now. And there's still this mentality that black people can't like be at the top. And it's not even a matter of, you know, 
give us affirmative action or anything. Nobody's asking you to give anything. Like this girl earned it. But because there are some people within the system who have been indoctrinated into whatever, it's not possible. This isn't possible for these thing, kind of things to happen. Like, why is that? <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> yeah. How, how did that possibly happen that she could have worked? Right. I mean, being a valedictorian is not a cakewalk. No. <laughs> we spent a lot of years working really hard. So is that the message that we're sending her is that, gee, the work you did wasn't fair or wasn't right, or you didn't work hard enough in the right enough subjects, or the one thing that you really can't control, the fact that you were born black, mm -hmm. that now weighs against the fact that you took AP classes and advanced standing yep. whatevers. And I remember my fifth grade teacher, and I still remember it to this day, she told me, you are going to have to work twice as hard to be considered half as good. And so if she made it to valedictorian, she did more than twice as much to be considered, you know, half you know as good. above everybody half. else. There's no way that she could have done half of what, you know, anybody else did and gotten to that point as a black woman. That's just not a thing. Yep. Yep. The other, you know, we talked about your fifth grade teacher before and <laughs> she you know what a powerful message to have given you accurate unfortunately but, mm -hmm. but powerful the other thing we're missing in this conversation or in the conversation about the valedictorians because there's this this young woman isn't the only one there was a right. whole piece in the new york times the other day mm -hmm. we're not talking about the fact that she got straight a's in phys ed and in chorus right and I think that's also getting lost in the mix. Again, going back to, you know, twice as hard for, you know, half the credit. Mm -hmm. She, as you just said, she obviously took the toughest of the tough classes. Right. And must have done well. But going back, so we've had a, an entire year of virtual school, which was already difficult. And then these kids, you know, they go through all this. So going into next year, how do you convince a child that it's even worth it to try? Like we've already had a crap year. People that did try, you know, either got rewarded and had it taken away in some manner, or they didn't receive anything at all. Right. Like, how do you convince a child, like going back into this system that it's worth it? <laughs> And especially when you, so you've got, you know, you, thankfully your oldest one is already out of high school. Thank God. <laughs> you know, but you still, you do, you have two little ones that are, are, you know, just starting their elementary school careers. Mm -hmm. And again, same question. Yeah. How do we convince them? So if we, you know, one of the things we've also been talking about is the Maslow's, Maslow's um, hierarchy of needs. Right. And he talks about how you have to have some basic needs met before you can get to higher callings, let's just say for right now. Mm -hmm. And you and I are going to talk more about that. I know because we talk about it all the time. Yes. <laughs> but if we think about the basics here, these kids know how to go to school. They've now mastered online education. Mm -hmm. As parents, you guys have mastered the art of juggling 50 things at once. Right. <laughs> so we're telling them now what the efforts that you did at home last year might not be enough mm -hmm. you didn't learn enough or you've bat you've slid so far back in your academic careers that's what it sounds like that's what it feels like yeah and the thing is my kids are in elementary school so there's there's time hopefully to recover like when my youngest, um, when the pandemic started, he was in the middle of kindergarten. So this last year has been a struggle trying to like do the reading and the writing and stuff. But these are kids that are on their way out. These kids that are going, that we're discussing like with the New York Times, these are kids that are on their way out. So they put in all of the hard work. And just because the color of their skin combined with a pandemic and parents who you know have taught their children in a sense of entitlement and now are afraid that entitlement will be taken away by somebody who's not qualified and that they don't deem as worthy like obviously we know she's qualified we know that the salutatorian also was qualified but because they were deemed unworthy it 
it's just ridiculous that, you know, they put in all of the hard work they've done. They were able to do this in a pandemic. So I was just going to point that out, you know, where this also the pandemic and the online learning has furthered d- the divide between the haves and the have nots. Right. So this young woman in Mississippi and the salutatorian, you're right. They obviously persevered through mm-hmm. potentially not having Wi-Fi service, potentially not having ideal conditions to work in. They right. might have had, you know, the most optimal conditions and yet they still did well. Mm-hmm. So how do we, you're right. How do we convince students who are now going back into the classroom, who've persevered all of last year and most of the year before, that they can do it? Hmm. It's a good question. It is. I'd love to know what the audience thinks. Yeah, we'd love to know what other people think. Yeah. I know that from where I'm coming, so where I'm coming from is a mental health background. Right. As a licensed clinical social worker and a full-time clinician, the place I'm always looking at is, you know, what kind of stability do these people have? What kind of footing do they have? Do we have underneath us? Because without solid footing underneath us, we're not going to be able to go anywhere. Right. Regardless of any other factor. Mm-hmm. Very true. That footing underneath you just got swept away. So lots of people are, you know, entering this year well, with so many mixed messages. Right. Who's entitled to the vaccine? Who's entitled to any number of things? who's entitled to good Wi-Fi connection. Yeah, something as simple that most of us take for granted. And it's not a simple thing for a lot of people. Yeah, and those kids who, you know, the school, I don't know if you know up up in some of the parts, I don't know down in some parts of the South and some parts of the Upper Plains states, um, school districts were outfitting their school buses with Wi-Fi and then sort of dropping their school buses off in central locations. Oh, so wow. the kids can go to those central locations and get the Wi-Fi off, off of the cell tower that was really the school bus. That's awesome. I mean, yeah. it's sad that like, you know, it took this to get the, you know, the access to the kids, but at least they have it now. At least they have it now. But again, what are we, what are we telling them? Go back to school. And if you don't have Wi-Fi at home, we're not going to provide it this year. We're not going to provide you with extra resources to catch up over the summer. So sorry that maybe you have to work this summer and you won't be able to access the resources that we have provided. That's a good question. Cause I know here, um, the kids were able to keep their laptops and iPads for, for the summer mm-hmm. and they have access to a few of the different resources. So, um, like they, my littles have Imagine Learning and Imagine Math. So they have like the reading and math covered. And then there's a book section where they can like get new books. So kind of like an online library and they can exchange books. Um, so they do have that for the summer. And then the county did a thing where they laid down new wires. So everybody should now have access. However, those families that got hotspots during the, the year, so if you got a hotspot, you had to turn that in the, by the last day of school. You don't get okay. to keep that. Um, so if your family wasn't one that was able to get access, because we live in a rural, rural area with the farms and stuff like that, um, and some people who even don't live on farms are out in that area, so they don't have access. So those people, you better hope you did really well in the school year because the summer slump is like, you know, it's not, it's, can't be real for you because you can't yep. get access to Wi-Fi unless you can find a way to the library, which is a whole nother issue. <laughs> right, which then does bring us to a, a whole nother issue and not only transportation, but are the libraries in your area even open? You know, ours yeah, just opened today. around here. Yeah, ours open today. Yeah, so. Yeah, again. but again, we live in a rural area, so. Our library is 15 minutes from me by car. However, if you're further down and it's 30 minutes by car and you don't have a car, that's a problem. That's a problem, which is so interesting because on the flip side, I live in Westchester County, which is just north of the Bronx Mm -hmm. in New York. And within our county, we have a, I think it's technically a city, Mount Vernon. Yeah, it's the city of Mount Vernon, which is oddly enough, mostly black and brown population. They, at the start of the school year, they did not have access to Wi-Fi, most of the families. The hotspots that were given out weren't working. 
And then the cable connection in that area apparently got so overloaded so fast that yep. the kids weren't able to keep up. Right. So now then the school district was faced with, well, how do we meet their needs? Well, we opened the building. Okay. But only two kids are coming in per classroom because most of the kids are either unaware or afraid or their parents don't want to take the chance. Mm -hmm. Lots of super legit reasons. But again, now those kids are behind. Right. And they're at this massive disadvantage just because of where they live. Right. And again, that goes back to, like you were saying earlier about the, the equity of who gets the vaccination, who gets Wi-Fi, who gets food. Who gets because food? if you're you know, too far from a grocery store that's actually got stuff because I know like our local grocery store has been getting filled recently, but I know that there are some places where the shelves are completely clean and it's like, we're at, back at the start of the pandemic all over again. There's not enough food to go around for everybody, depending on where you are and how close you are on the transportation routes. And also depending on what your economic exactly. system was like beforehand. So if you were already struggling, mm -hmm. your parents were relying on, you know, the free breakfast, free lunch, free right. weekend meals. And now those are either difficult to obtain or you have to go to the school to pick them up. Going back to your point, okay, you're only 15 minutes away or 10 minutes away by, by car. Right. But if you have to walk that and you're walking back a week's worth of lunch for your one or two or three or four or five kids. Right. It's several grocery bags. It's what, yeah. they're, what they're doing. Yeah. Yeah. And in the middle of a heat wave that we just right. broke out of. Oh gosh, no. We are at, actually, I think it's going to cool off today because I think we have like a little bit of rain coming in. Thank God. What's your definition of cool? Because I woke up this morning and I thought, oh, it's going to be cool. And the kitchen registered at 81 degrees. And I was like, this is not cool. Yeah, that's about where we are. But it's not 90. <laughs> it's not 100. So I love I'm not always looking at the good stuff. It's not 100. No. Yesterday I got in the car and it was like 102 degrees. So I'm like, it's 80 degrees. We're having a cool day. Yes. Good point. Yes, we are. <laughs> so in the weeks ahead, I know that you and I talked about we want to work on talking about um, Maslow, variations of Maslow, mm -hmm. and then some different racial issues that have been popping up. Let me rephrase that, because they haven't been popping up. They've always been there, but we're finally giving them the attention that they deserve. Right. And I think that's really cool. So I'm, I know I sent you a link, I have to listen to it myself, on uh, the Brian Lehrer show. Mm -hmm. um, there was something recently about the Olympic athlete, um, the hammer thrower, Yes, that's what you I would be good. I, yeah, my that's a whole conversation that I really need to wrap my head around because if people like people get so upset about the national anthem, and it's like, do you know what those verses say? Do you know what they mean for black people? who know what their ancestors had to go through. Like all of that song has nothing to do with freedom and liberty and, and justice for all. Exactly, because there is no justice for the people that were enslaved during the time that it was written. Yep. The other part I find so interesting about this is that that woman wasn't, she was not being disrespectful. She was simply no. asking for people to take a listen and, and to think about what it is that was being said. Uh -huh. Just asking you to pay attention. And somehow she needs to be attacked? Yes, because she disrespected the flag. And that's another thing that people don't understand, like kneeling for the flag and not doing the uh, Star Spangled Banner. Or, like, they have nothing to do with your love for your home country. It's not about the military. It has nothing to do with any about any of that. It's the racist institution in which we live in. And do you know what's so interesting about the kneeling for the flag? Colin Kaepernick consulted with exactly. gazillions of people before he decided what form his <laughs> protest was going to take. Right. And the military, the gentleman that he talked to was the one that said, this is the most respectful way to do it. And it makes no sense. Okay. But I think if people don't have something to argue about, then like some way to defend their superiority or whatever is going on in their mind, it's like, 
you know, those top parts of Maslow's, you know, pyramid yeah. when, when things start like getting swiped out and then all of a sudden your top thing starts dwindling down and then it's like, okay, well now I have to fight for the survival of my bottom layer. And these are the people that are trying to take it from me when it's like, no, we're just trying to get up off the bottom layer to, yeah. you know, to rise up with everybody else. What's that, that favorite saying that we, we both know very well, a rising tide lifts all boats. Yes. But the part I think is so interesting and maybe, maybe it's just me, you know, maybe it's just this white chick, <laughs> but I, I can't help but wonder how many people who are not black and brown mm -hmm. are just sort of in a knee jerk reaction saying that's disrespectful or that's rude or that's, you know, that's obviously somebody who's not a patriot because they haven't really thought about their, where they're coming from and what their point is. Right. They just, no, that, that's disrespectful. You shouldn't ever do that. I, I've seen yeah. just as many people who are not of color dragging flags along the road and burning them, burning them, which again is not actually all that terrible. If you no, but it's not all that terrible, depending on what you look like. <laughs> exactly. And I think that's the hard part for, for people yep. of color is we can do like something as simple as kneeling right. and it's like the end of the world. And, um, but you know, it's like there's, it's the end of the world when the flag is disrespected. You know, you're right though. When, so if a person of color kneels, that's, that's somehow a disrespectful and be a, a sign of protest. Mm -hmm. And yet, you know, right around now, a year ago, um, in with the Ferguson case, white cops and white police officers and chiefs were kneeling. Mm -hmm. And that was being put up on the paper as being, you know, look, we're trying to heal the racial issues. Right. It's not for them. It's not seen as a protest. It's seen as being Oh, we're, we're joining with you in solidarity. Yes, which is like, I don't know. It, to me, it's one of those, those pacifying things. It's kind of like Juneteenth. It is now uh, a national uh, holiday, just in time to sweep everything else under the rug. <laughs> it's like, what? Why is everybody looking over here? Do you not see what's going on over here? But we have a holiday. What? <laughs> so again, a preview as to what's to come because right. we've been talking about this for a couple of weeks now too, how Juneteenth is now this major holiday. Mm -hmm. and yet, so if you think about it for a quick second, if we picture um, a tree, mm -hmm. we've got the roots of a tree, we've got the bark, we've got the structure of a tree, but in the center of the tree, we have all of that life force that's moving through it. The, you know, that entire right. system is fed. And in order to do that, you know, a whole bunch of things have to be in, in good harmony. Our movement happens through the, the legislative process. Mm -hmm. So while this legislation was going through over here, all these states over here, kind of like, let's not talk about it, we're coming up with these new voter systems. Right. Right. <laughs> to be more fair, you know, because somebody believes that the vote was swiped or taken or fraudulent. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's funny because I saw something on Facebook the other day where they were talking about, um, you know, all of these mass shootings and all these people are killed. Let's make it easier for people to get guns. There's probably 160 fraudulent votes that could be found in this last election. Let's make it harder to vote. I don't understand. <laughs> but the thing is, the black oh, vote was way too powerful. Let's put, a, let's put a big circle around that. 160 something plain 160 so 160.00 mm -hmm. not 160,000 right. 160 million right 160 less than 200 fraudulent votes mm -hmm. yep and now we're going to make it harder right because the outcome wasn't what you wanted, which goes back to the valedictorian situation. When the outcome is not what the people in power want, and this is the epitome, I think, of what people are talking about with white supremacy. It's when the people in power who are mostly white 
are not able to get their way, we have to change the rules in order for them to catch up to play the game. Yeah. It makes no sense, especially considering the number of children that we have lost in mass shootings. Right. The number of, you know, whether it's men, women, children, whatever, but the number of innocent people. Right. You know, like in their homes, it's right. Kids who happen to be out on the sidewalk. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And it's there's there's all these things going on. But again, we'll give you a holiday and we'll just have you look over here while we're doing all of these things over here. And it just makes no sense. And I think the whole political system is a bunch of smoke and mirrors. It is, which reminds me of um I remember what I'm one of the people I work with, one of my guys, once talking about how, so a lot, you know, you and I know, um, a lot of people I work with are firefighters. Mm -hmm. And he was enraged because he, they had just pulled up to this building and somebody was outside screaming about how, you know, there was this huge fire. Oh my God, oh my God, you gotta go, you gotta go, you gotta get in. And he looked up and, you know, he had enough experience to know that was a bathroom window. That was steam coming out of that window, not smoke. Mm -hmm. And yes, he was still going to go and still going to investigate and still going to make sure. But there was, you know, the thing that made him crazy was all these people out on the sidewalk screaming about how they weren't moving fast enough with no understanding of a whole lot of things, including the right. fact that an experienced eye knows what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. And going back to your smoke and mirrors, we do, we spend a lot of time looking at the mirrors both because we want to see the shiny things and we want to see how gorgeous and amazing we look. Mm -hmm. And we don't want to look at what's happening underneath all that smoke. Right. Because where there's smoke, there's fire. We cannot, you know, and that's the thing, like your firefighter, he knows the difference between smoke and steam. A lot of people don't know the difference. Yep. So, but, and they also don't understand that really honest to God, where there is smoke, there is a fire. There is something to pay attention to. Right. So we can, well, let's look over here, Juneteenth. Yes, because, you know, it's, it's all pretty. And like you said, you've got the shiny things. But when you, when you start to look, it's like, is this a funhouse mirror? Or is this like a regular mirror? Is it actually reflecting back what's in front of it? And I think as long as people see like the shine and the glimmer and they're okay with what's in the mirror, you know, it's like right. a one foot view of, what's going on right here, right now. I don't need to worry about everything else. If somebody else is distorted, it's okay. Cause I look good. <laughs> exactly. I'm okay. Are you okay? <laughs> All right. So more of this to come. Yes. This, yeah. Most definitely. This was awesome. This was awesome. Listen, so since we weren't able to sort of join you live or you weren't able to join us live, um, we will pop back into the chat. So please feel free to drop us any questions, concerns, if you've got a topic that you want us to chat about, please leave yes. it in the chat box as well. Okay. Cool. Exactly. And we are always looking for new articles so we would love for you to yeah, go ahead. share some with us. Well, <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So see you later. Bye. Bye.